The militaries of the world are testing experimental vehicles that are designed to fulfill unique and strange purposes, from vertical takeoff vehicles that don't need a runway to steampunk transports that look like they belong in a movie. Here are 15 of the most unusual military vehicles ever designed. Starting with number 15, the Akranoplan. The Akranoplan, also known as the Caspian Sea Monster, is a unique type of ground effect vehicle designed by the Soviet Union during the Cold War. Developed in the 1960s by Rotislav Alexiev, the Akronoplan is a hybrid between an aircraft and a ship, using ground effect to glide over the water's surface at low altitudes. It measures up to 92 meters in length, and these large vehicles are powered by jet engines, enabling them to achieve impressive speeds of up to 500 kilometers an hour. One notable Akronoplan is the KM, a massive vehicle with a wingspan of over 37 meters. It was equipped with six turbojet engines that could carry up to 137 tons of cargo. Another model, the Lund class, was designed for anti-ship missions, armed with missiles and equipped with radar systems. Despite their potential, they did face challenges, including limited maneuverability and susceptibility to rough sea conditions. The development of these vehicles slowed down with the end of the Cold War, and only a few were built and tested. Today, though, they remain intriguing relics of a bygone era. Although the Akronoplans did not become widely adopted, their unique design and engineering principles have continued to capture the interest of enthusiasts and researchers alike. The Caspian Sea Monster in particular stands as a symbol of the Soviet Union's ambitious experimentation. Number 14. The ZIL-2906 Screw-Driven Vehicle so this is a screw-driven amphibious vehicle developed by the Soviet Union during the 1970s. Measuring 4.8 meters in length, 2.5 meters in width, and 1.6 meters in height, the vehicle featured a cylindrical body mounted on two large screw propellers. It was designed to operate on various terrains, including snow, swamps, and water. It's powered by a V8 engine with 7.5 liters of displacement. This thing had a maximum speed of around 45 miles an hour on land and 6.7 miles per hour on water. The screw propulsion system allowed it to navigate through challenging environments where traditional wheeled or tracked vehicles might struggle. It could accommodate up to 10 passengers and was equipped with basic amenities such as heating, ventilation, and communication equipment. Its amphibious capability was made possible by the large rotating screws which enabled the vehicle to move seamlessly between land and water without the need for modifications. Now, despite its innovative design, it never saw widespread adoption and only a limited number were produced for testing and evaluation. The vehicle did face challenges such as high production costs, limited practical applications, and maintenance issues associated with its unique propulsion system. While it didn't become a mainstream solution, the vehicle remains an interesting example of unconventional military tech developed during the Cold War era. Number 13. The Progev T The Progev T, a Soviet experimental tank, emerged in the 1970s with a distinct unconventional design. Weighing around 38 tons and measuring approximately 9.8 meters in length, the tank featured a low-profile hull and a unique revolving turret concept. The turret housed both the crew compartment and the main armament, allowing the entire turret to rotate independently of the hull. The tank's primary gun was a 125mm smoothbore, providing it with firepower comparable to contemporary Soviet tanks. The Progev T also featured advanced systems such as laser rangefinders and night vision equipment. Despite its innovative design and technological features, it faced numerous challenges that led to its ultimate abandonment. The revolving turret system, while unique, proved complex and difficult to maintain. The tank's low profile, intended to enhance its battlefield survivability, resulted in a cramped crew compartment, limiting the tank's practicality and crew comfort. Moreover, its unconventional design posed some logistical challenges and increased production costs, making it less economically viable compared to traditional tank designs. As a result, the Soviet military opted for more conventional tank models like the T-72 and T-80, which offered a better balance of performance, reliability, and cost-effectiveness. While it didn't find any success on the battlefield, it still remains a fascinating example of Soviet experimentation with tank design during the Cold War. Number 12. Boston Dynamics Big Dog Developed by Boston Dynamics, the Big Dog is a quadruped robot designed for carrying heavy loads across rough terrain. The project began in 2005 with funding from the Defense Advanced Research Projects Agency, or DARPA. 
The motivation behind the Big Dog's creation was to assist military personnel by serving as a robotic pack mule, capable of navigating environments where traditional vehicles might struggle. The robot stands at 0.9 meters tall and weighs approximately 340 kilos. Its design includes articulated legs with advanced sensors and hydraulically actuated joints, allowing it to maintain its stability on uneven terrain. Its movements are controlled by an onboard computer, which processes data from its sensors to adapt to changing conditions. Now, Big Dog has a carrying capacity of up to 180 kilograms, and it's capable of moving at a speed of about 6.5 kilometers per hour. The robot can carry its various payloads, making it versatile for different applications, and its intended use was to lighten the load for soldiers in the field, transporting equipment and supplies. Despite all of its advancements, the Big Dog project faced challenges in terms of noise, power consumption, and its somewhat unsettling appearance. In 2015, Boston Dynamics discontinued the Big Dog program, shifting focus to other robotics projects. However, the research and development carried out on Big Dog contributed to the evolution of subsequent systems, such as SPOT and LS3, or Legged Squad Support System, which have found applications in various industries beyond military use. Number 11. The Standard Beaverette the Standard Beaverette, introduced during World War II, was a light armored car manufactured by the Standard Motor Company in the United Kingdom. It had a simple design, featuring a boxy body mounted on a commercial car chassis. It measured approximately 13 feet in length, 6.5 feet in width, and stood about 6.5 feet tall. Constructed with an armored hull made of 9.5 mm steel plates, it provided protection against small arms fire. It was armed with a single brand light machine gun, typically mounted on a small turret on the roof. The vehicle accommodated a crew of two or three. The primary purpose of it was reconnaissance and internal security duties. It is modest, and its armor and armament limited its effectiveness in frontline combat, but its mobility and relatively low cost made it suitable for non-combat roles. However, the standard Beaverette faced criticisms for some of its shortcomings. Its armor was deemed insufficient for combat, and its open-top design left the crew exposed to various elements. While the standard Beaverette did not see widespread use in frontline battles, it found application in training, internal security, and convoy escorts. Some variants were also utilized for police and colonial forces post-war. In retrospect, the standard Beaverette was a utilitarian and adaptable vehicle. But its limitations and the evolving demands of wartime led to its phase-out use in frontline military ops. Number 10. Vespa 150 TAP The Vespa 150 TAP, a peculiar military vehicle, emerged during the 1950s as a collab between the Italian manufacturer Piaggio and the French military. It was essentially a modified version of the popular Vespa scooter, designed to serve as a lightweight and portable anti-tank weapon platform. The Vespa 150 TAP featured a distinctive design with a tubular frame supporting a reinforced fiberglass shell to accommodate the driver and the anti-tank weapon. The vehicle measured approximately 7.5 feet in length and 3.5 feet in width. And what set it apart was its mounted M20 75mm recoilless rifle designed to be fired from the scooter while dismounted. The scooter itself was not intended for combat but served as a rapid deployment vehicle for anti-tank weapons. Its lightweight design allowed for swift deployment, making it suitable for hit-and-run tactics. It saw limited use in the Algerian War, so 1954 to 1962, where it was employed by French paratroopers. Despite the novelty, the Vespa 150 TAP faced practical challenges, too, that contributed to its eventual obscurity. The recoil generated by the M20 posed a significant issue, causing instability and making accurate firing while mounted on the scooter challenging. Additionally, the limited ammunition capacity and the vulnerability of the driver exposed during firing made it less effective in real combat scenarios. As a result, it was phased out of surface relatively quickly, replaced by more conventional and purpose-built anti-tank vehicles. It does, though, remain as an unusual and interesting historical artifact, reflecting creative attempts to adapt civilian vehicles for military use. Number 9. Sercouf the Sercouf, named after the French privateer Robert Sercouf, was a submarine cruiser commissioned by the French Navy during the interwar period. Launched in 1929, the Sercouf was a large and unconventional vessel that blended features of both subs and surface ships. Measuring approximately 360 feet in length with a beam of around 29 feet, the Sercouf was a massive submarine compared to its contemporaries. Its unique design featured a traditional submarine hull with a large conning tower resembling a battleship's bridge. And the vessel was armed with eight 550mm torpedo tubes, a 203mm gun turret, and anti-aircraft guns. The Sorokouf was intended for long-range patrols and carried a reconnaissance aircraft launched from a catapult on its deck. This made it one of the most unusual submarines of its time, combining surface warfare with underwater stealth. 
During World War II, the Surkhoof primarily operated in the Atlantic, patrolling trade routes and disrupting enemy shipping. However, it didn't see much action or notable success in battle. In 1942, the Surkhoof mysteriously disappeared while on a mission in the Caribbean. The exact circumstances of its loss remain uncertain, with some suggesting a collision with an American freighter. It's faced several challenges that have contributed to its limited success and eventual disappearance. Its size and complexity made it pretty difficult to maneuver, especially when submerged. Additionally, its dual role as both a submarine and a surface cruiser made it a compromise that excelled in neither as a traditional submarine nor a surface ship. So, it failed to meet the expectations of naval strategists and its design was considered impractical. Number 8. The Convair F-2Y Sea Dart the F-2Y Sea Dart was a unique seaplane developed by Convair in the 1950s. Its distinctive feature was its ability to take off and land on water, making it one of the few supersonic seaplanes ever created. It had a length of 45 feet and a wingspan of 33 feet. It was designed as a fighter interceptor, and it was intended to operate from the surface of the water, eliminating the need for traditional runways. It was equipped with a delta wing configuration, vertical stabilizers, and a retractable hydro skis that allowed it to operate on the water surface. With the first prototype taking flight in 1953, it achieved supersonic speeds and demonstrated promising performance during testing. However, despite its unique design and capability, the Sea Dart faced some challenges that limited its operational viability. It was primarily constructed of aluminum alloy, and it was powered by a J-71 turbojet engine and was armed with four 20mm cannons. Despite its promising features, the Sea Dart didn't see active service or engage in any combat. Several factors contributed to its limited success, though. Its hydro skis, while innovative, posed operational challenges, and the transition between water and air proved difficult to manage. Despite reaching speeds of up to 825 miles an hour, the Sea Dart's unique design, while groundbreaking, did become a hindrance. With the advent of more conventional and versatile land-based craft coupled with the operational complexities of seaplanes, led to the discontinuation of the Sea Dart project in the late 1950s. Only a small number of prototypes were produced, and the Sea Dart remains as an unusual and iconic example of experimental aviation, demonstrating the audacious attempt to merge supersonic capabilities with seaplanes. Moving on to number 7, the Bell X-22 Tilt Rotor. The Bell X-22 Tilt Rotor was an experimental aircraft developed by Bell Helicopter in the 1960s as part of a research program exploring vertical takeoff and landing. Its design incorporated four tilting ducted fans, allowing for it to take off and land like a helicopter, while transitioning to a more conventional airplane mode in forward flight. It had a distinctive appearance, featuring a fuselage with a central lift fan and four ducted fans at the wingtips. It had a wingspan of approximately 31 feet and an overall length of 27 feet. The aircraft was constructed mainly using aluminum alloy, and the primary objective of the X-22 was to investigate the feasibility and advantages of tilt rotor tech. It underwent a series of test flights demonstrating its VTOL capabilities and the ability to fly at high speeds too. However, despite its technological advancements, the X-22 didn't progress beyond the experimental stage as it didn't see operational use or battle. The project faced several challenges that contributed to its limited success, and the transition between vertical and horizontal flight modes presented difficulties, and the complex mechanical systems required the four tilting ducted fans posed maintenance and operational challenges. In terms of performance, the X-22 had a top speed of about 230 miles an hour. Its unique tilt rotor design made it stand out from traditional aircraft, showcasing innovative thinking of its time. However, the practical challenges it faced, coupled with the evolving priorities of military aviation, led to the termination of the X-22 program. Number 6. The Yakovlev Yak-36 Freehand The Yak-36 Freehand was a Soviet experimental VTOL, or vertical takeoff and landing aircraft, developed during the 1960s. At a length of about 45 feet and a wingspan of around 22 feet, it featured a delta wing and a single engine with four swiveling nozzles, allowing for vertical takeoff and landing. The Yak-36 was designed as a technology demonstrator to explore the feasibility of vertical flight for military operations. It didn't see operational use or battle, serving solely as a testbed to reevaluate VTOL concepts. It did represent a significant effort in Soviet aviation to explore this VTOL tech. Despite being a pioneering attempt, the Yak-36 faced some challenges. The transition between vertical and horizontal flight modes proved difficult and the aircraft experienced control issues. It didn't enter mass production, and its experimental nature combined with the complexities associated with VTOL at the time led to the termination of the program. 
In terms of performance, it did have a top speed of about 745 miles per hour. The aircraft's uniqueness lay in its attempt to combine the agility of vertical takeoff and landing with the speed of conventional flight. While the Yak-36 did not become a frontline aircraft, it contributed to the Soviet Union's exploration of VTOL tech, eventually leading to the development of more successful VTOL platforms. It remains an unusual experimental entry in the history of Soviet aviation, showcasing the challenges and innovations associated with early VTOL aircraft development. Number 5. Triebefugel the Triebefugel, a German experimental vertical takeoff and landing craft, emerged during the closing stages of World War II. It was designed by the Third Reich as an unconventional VTOL interceptor. It had a distinctive three-winged rotor layout with a wingspan of around 32 feet. It had a length of approximately 19 feet and was constructed primarily of wood and steel. The Triebefugel featured triangular rotor assembly mounted on a central fuselage. Each rotor had a diameter of about 19 feet and was powered by a ramjet engine. It was conceived as an interceptor, designed to counter Allied bomber formations with its agility and VTOL capability. However, the project faced numerous challenges, and the development was hindered by the deteriorating situation of Nazi Germany. Several prototypes were under construction, but none of them reached the stage of flight testing before the war's conclusion. The project was terminated as the Allies advanced into German territory. The incomplete prototypes were discovered by Allied forces, and the aircraft never saw operational use or battle. Its unusual design was a product of desperate circumstances of the war and the need for innovative solutions to counter the Allied air superiority. The concept aimed to combine the benefits of a helicopter's vertical takeoff with the speed and efficiency of a jet-powered craft. However, the practical challenges associated with this complex rotor system and the limited development time frame prevented it from becoming a viable craft. Despite its uniqueness, it never became more than an intriguing prototype. The challenges of transitioning between vertical and horizontal flight modes, coupled with the logistical and resource constraints faced by Germany in the final years of the war, caused the project's ultimate failure. Number 4. The Flying Bedstead the Flying Bedstead, officially known as the Rolls-Royce Thrust Measuring Rig, was a distinctive experimental aircraft that played a critical role in the development of vertical takeoff and landing tech. Measuring approximately 21 feet in length, the Flying Bedstead had a minimalist design consisting of a rough framework supporting a pair of jet engines mounted vertically on either side. Developed in the 1950s by the Royal Aircraft Establishment in collaboration with Rolls-Royce, the Flying Bedstead served as a testbed for VTOL concepts. Constructed primarily of steel and aluminum, the flying bedstead lacked wings or traditional control surfaces. Instead, it relied on thrust vectoring and small nozzles to direct engine exhaust for control. Throughout its development, the flying bedstead underwent numerous test flights, providing invaluable insights into dynamics and challenges of vertical flight. Despite its role as a groundbreaking testbed to gather essential information for the development of the more advanced VTOL aircraft, the aircraft's steel and aluminum construction highlighted its utilitarian nature, prioritizing functionality over aesthetics. While the flying bedstead didn't really work out as a combat aircraft, it succeeded admirably in its intended role as a test platform. It provided essential data to address challenges, paving the way for successful deployment of VTOL aircraft. Oh, and the name Flying Bedstead likely originated from its simple and unadorned appearance, resembling a bedstead or bed frame suspended in midair. The nickname, while informal, captures the essence of the aircraft's design, a utilitarian platform focused on achieving a specific goal rather than adhering to traditional aesthetics. Number 3. The Tsar Tank the Tsar tank, or the Lebedenko tank, represented a Russian armored venture spearheaded by Nikolai Lebedenko, Nikolai Yegorovich Zulkovsky, Boris Stechkin, and Alexander Mikulin from 1914 onward. In 1915, the project faced cancellation following initial tests revealing the vehicle's underpowered nature and vulnerability to artillery. Its colossal front-spoked wheels nearly 30 feet in diameter contrasted sharply with the diminutive 5-foot-high rear-mounted third wheel. Inspiration for this unique machine derived from Turkish Pavosky carts, renowned for negotiating bumps and ditches with ease due to their large diameter wheels. The upper cannon turret soared to nearly 26 feet, while the 39-foot wide hull accommodated additional weaponry. Each of the wheels was propelled by a 240-horsepower Maybach engine, reaching a top speed of 10 miles an hour. Now, Lebedenko's private laboratory in Moscow became the hub for military orders. A pivotal audience with Nicholas II transpired in January 15. Presenting a clockwork wooden model with a gramophone spring-based engine, Lebedenko and the Tsar arranged in a playful demonstration. Impressed, Nicholas II allocated 210,000 rubles from his personal funds for the project, retaining the wooden model afterwards. 
The rear steerable roller encountered immediate issues, sinking into the soft ground during initial tests, and despite the formidable Maybach engines from a damaged German airship, the tank couldn't extricate itself, leading to a series of unsuccessful tests. In August 1915, the High Commission terminated the project, yet Stechkin and Mikulin persisted in developing a new engine. These efforts proved fruitless, mirroring the futile attempts to relocate and salvage the SAR tank. Guarded at the test site until 1917, the tank succumbed into obscurity amidst the Russian Revolution, and it was left to rust in the forest 37 miles from Moscow. In 1923, six years later, the tank met its final fate, dismantled for scrap. Number 2. The Kugelpanzer The Kugelpanzer, it's a mysterious and unusual vehicle from World War II. It was a small, spherical tank of approximately five and a quarter feet in diameter. Encased in a rotating armored ball, the tank had a hatch for the driver and was mounted on a single wheel, enabling movement in any direction. Its design was highly compact and aimed at providing reconnaissance capability. The history of the Kugelpanzer remains mysterious, with a little concrete information available. It's believed to have been a product of German engineering during the latter part of World War II. The spherical shape and single wheel design were intended to enhance the tank's agility and maneuverability. Constructed primarily of rolled steel plates, the Kugelpanzer was a modest vehicle with no offensive weaponry. Instead, its purpose was reconnaissance and potentially carrying a small payload of intelligence gathering equipment. Now, despite its intriguing design, there's no evidence to suggest that the Kugelpanzer saw active combat. Its limited production numbers, coupled with the scarcity of historical records, contribute to the mystery surrounding its deployment. Now, the name Kugelpanzer itself is descriptive, translating to ball tank in English. This nomenclature absolutely captures the essence of the vehicle's design, a spherical tank mounted on a single wheel. Some suggest it may have been designed for clandestine missions, reconnaissance in urban environments, or even deployment in confined spaces such as tunnels or bunkers. While it does represent an intriguing piece of military engineering, the factors contributing to its obscurity remain a subject of speculation. The challenge associated with its design, including limited firepower and potentially complex maneuvering, may have rendered it impractical for widespread use. The Kugelpanzer's unique design, diminutive size, and mysterious history contributes to its status as an unusual and enigmatic vehicle from World War II. Number 1. The VZ-9 Avro Car The VZ-9 Avro Car was an experimental vertical takeoff and landing aircraft developed in the late 1950s by Avro Canada. The saucer-shaped vehicle had a diameter of approximately 18 feet and a height of around 3 feet. It was constructed with a steel frame covered in aluminum and fiberglass. Now, this design aimed to create a supersonic hover-capable aircraft for military applications, specifically as a flying saucer. The vehicle was intended for low-altitude, high-speed flight. Development was initiated as part of a U.S. military contract to explore the feasibility of VTOL. The project faced numerous challenges from the outset, and the circular design, while unique, proved unstable in flight, leading to control issues. The VZ-9 Avro car underwent extensive testing during its development, primarily at Avro Canada's facilities in Ontario. The testing phase aimed to evaluate the vehicle's vertical takeoff and landing capability, stability in flight, and overall performance. Its unique saucer-shaped design presented significant challenges. During the testing process, it became apparent that the Avro car struggled to achieve the desired vertical lift, and its control, especially in higher speeds, proved problematic. The ground effect phenomena, where the proximity to the ground influences aerodynamics, became a critical factor, limiting the vehicle's altitude and speed. Despite extensive testing, the Avro car never reached its intended performance levels. It struggled to achieve the desired vertical lift, and its top speed was limited to around 35 miles an hour. The instability and control difficulties ultimately led to the cancellation of the project in 1961. The cancellation marked the end of its operational history. While it never entered military service, the knowledge gained from its development and testing contributed to advancements in VTOL. Hindsight is always 2020, and a design like this may be cool, but the flying saucer design created too many insurmountable aerodynamic challenges. The project's cancellation highlighted the difficulty of translating sci-fi inspired concepts into functional military aircraft. The Avro car's short-lived existence and its role in UFO lore contributes to its status as an unusual and intriguing piece of aviation history. Thanks for watching, guys. I'll see you next time. Thank you to our channel members.